that uh, we would love to, because somebody helped to move this um, table of appreciation. And if we can move, move it, uh, maybe like at the right here. Yeah, thank you so much, right here. And just we want to personally thank you. We just want to personally, this is good. Yeah, thank you so much. We, t we want to personally acknowledge. And, and when I was looking at the volunteers, I thought, I counted and I go, hey, 41. So if we have a congregation of 60, that's like two thirds. <laughs> we have two thirds who are volunteers. And this is not just like one time thing. This is like every every week, you know, every week or every month, like throughout the year. So I'm like, wow, we are, that's why I was saying that, hey, we're a labor intensive ministry. But then I go, I go, wait, no, that's because we are so into the generations together. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So um, again, I want to say these are documented ones. And thank you for those of you whose reward is in heaven that you've been supporting behind the scenes. And if, um, for whatever uh, my neglect, please come and talk to me like, hey, <laughs> what's wrong with you? You didn't put my name up there. I've been slaving. No, just kidding. So let me know. <laughs> so I would like to, on behalf of our entire church family right here, to recognize you. So um, when I call you, would you mind coming just right up here? We just want to see your face, and many of you are multiple ministries, so we highlighted the ones that you are the leader of or taking the most leadership. So from Vinaya, Vinaya small group leaders, Garrett and Jonathan. And for uh, the family home group uh, leader and help helper and co-leader, you can please just make a line right here. So can we have Laura and Johan, please? And for, uh, and for Judy, who has been an account keeper for four years, it's right here, please. And for our youth counselors, every single Friday, we love your photos when you take the generations out. We post it everywhere. So could we have for the past year, Daniel, Tiffany, um, Amy, Frank is not here, Jonathan, Alvin, Winston, Matt, Grace, uh, Chloe, Casey, Kelly. So if you're here, come on up. And for Sunday, for Sunday service, uh, every Sunday we have a team right here. So uh, we have um, Tiffany as the worship uh, coordinator. And we have Brianna as our Sunday coordinator. And we have the web webmaster Bryson <laughs> oh he gets a code for a source code <laughs> don't mess with him <laughs> yeah and um, and we have Nathan uh, Nathan who uploads our video every single week and I heard it takes hours so um, we also want to thank uh, our audio like audio visual communion prep and Frank has been doing that and also Lily <laughs> She's at the back and doing the filming. And for our worship team, um, Matt, Winston, Tiffany, and Amy, they're the worship leaders for the past year. And for our Worldview Gospel Project and Sunday School, we have Randy, Stephen, John, who is in Taiwan eating yummy, yummy food right now. So yes, I hope you watch this video. <laughs> um, we have Fiona. And Ingrid, Christine, Hongwen, Biyong, Kong Dan, Yading, David, Guang Tian. Yeah, so we have, these are the ones that are just here. So, so please stay right there. I'm going to invite Elder Nikki up. I actually recorded a similar eclipse yesterday, but somehow Elvin didn't get it in. I did it twice, one in Mandarin, and I think all the parents there, and then in English. I'm doing like selfie really hard, but I made it, but somehow <laughs> didn't show. Anyway, I imagine on the heaven one day and also today, a, there will be a similar ceremony just like this. You guys are recognized because you already pour out. So I really um, want to thank you, every one of you. Like um, I imagine one day those youth or even us will remember something. We actually deposit life into each other, that's uh, so good. So uh, yeah, just those are, 
Yeah, can we present you something? So for our coordinators and our um, home, uh, for our fellowship leaders, can I have John Jonathan, oh, Jonathan, Jonathan, Garrett, <laughs> um, Brianna, coordinator, and Tiffany, who is at the other service right now. Yes, thank you. And we're just Tiffany, Tiffany. Tiffany is not Tiffany. Tiffany. Oh, we'll give it to the husband. So. <laughs> Yeah, please receive on behalf of your wife. <laughs> yes, and um, so, and can we present to Bryson and Matt, <laughs> and Matt, okay, and Daniel, <laughs> and Daniel, and Johan, uh, and Judy, it's Johan and Laura. <laughs> oh, this is good, Judy, okay. And Stephen. So can we all like reach our hands and then ask the Lord to bless them? Shall every one of us pray in your own words? Father, we want to thank all of them for showing your love and blessing to us in a very selfless way. They um, invest their emotion, their heart, their affection, their time, their energy, and they really, really stretch out just to serve us and serve you. Father, we thank you for raising them up as like a witness. They are just like the cloud of witness. Father, even though none of us are perfect, but they are showing your love, and we receive that. So, Father, we ask them to return all the favor, all the blessing that we receive, and back to them. Father, just enrich their life even more, strengthen their inner life, and in the new year to come, Father, I ask them, they will encounter you wherever, wherever they go, whatever they do, they will encounter you and your favor and blessing. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Please have a seat. And if I can have two, um, two brothers help us to move that to the side. And we have um, Elder Stephen. We have a, uh, another presentation. Would you please come on up? Uh, Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, we want to honor Elder Nikki. And uh, just, we just thank you so much for uh, just being the leader, not only over the English ministry here, uh, and using all your gifts and your heart for here, and, uh, but also just being a blessing for our church. Actually, stand right here. Right here. Yeah. We're going to pray over her because, you know, I remember Anita Johnson, you were interceding, and you were really close to Anita, and she goes, do you see Jesus? And she goes, and I remember Nikki is so humble, just, no, I don't see Jesus. <laughs> and Nita goes, what's going on? Why am I the only one seeing Jesus? Well, actually, I have that gift too. So <laughs> but she's like, he's standing right over there. But I do believe her faithfulness that um, I feel the Lord's presence in this room. And I do feel just kind of a portal of heaven. And, uh, and we are the body of Christ and so in unity, we're going to just express Christ's heart and open up. When you see Christ, Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. And the Father represents heaven in the glory of heaven. And he is so good, we don't need to wait until death to receive rewards. When heaven opens, we can get exposed to the blessings of heaven. And so for all her labors and everything, I pray that the heaven would open. And actually, I feel it. Um, just reach out your hands to bless her. And 
Lord, just don't just come, Holy Spirit. Oh Lord, uh, I just pray you just right now in her heart, in her spirit, she can see you, Jesus, and she can see the love and the kindness of the Father. Oh, it's just the kindness of your presence that you see everything, and everything does not need to be perfect. But because the Lord just sees your heart, and I just remember like Mike Bickle, you know, explains when we do the tasks of heaven, the Father God it just looks at us like a three-year-old who's trying to wash the dishes. You know, there might be pots and pans broken, the water not turned off, but he's so proud. His heart is so, oh, it comes alive. There, just... I just feel the kindness. Amen. You should just pray over her um, nervous system. I see just uh, electricity just going through her spine. Just pray more into that. Just more. And Lord, I just pray, and I also see a picture of your blood. Holy Spirit, just heal her blood. Oh, Lord, uh, uh, you just renounce the curses generational curses of blood sickness and just issues. And uh, we just open up heaven because heaven on earth, there's just so many blessings. Heaven on earth, we can just rebuke just like you, Jesus. And you promise we can do greater deeds than you. And Holy Spirit, just, uh, just fill her more with your peace and your love. Oh, we just thank you. Just fill more. Just more. Just even more. Amen. Thank you, church. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Mishi. You got a little bit of that overflow, right? Amen. Yes. Amen. Good morning, family. Okay. Can I, yeah, can I get a stand? Could you guys help me out? We feel so spread out. I don't like it. Can you all come closer, please? Like, maybe into these sections. And as you get up and move, you can greet someone again. Give him, ooh, praise the Lord. You can give him a high five. You can give him a hug. Come on, greet somebody. Let's move, move, move. Thank you, thank you. My Athena, Nathan, and Sam, y'all backseaters, come to the fronters. That'd be wonderful. Shift over. That's good. Ooh, it's a little bit better. I like it. Yeah, Toby. Thank you, Toby. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Stephen. You guys are awesome. Move up a little bit more. Yeah, second row. Go for it. Yeah, Michael. I love it. Thank you. That feels a little bit better, right? More cozy? Yay. I'm so thankful I get to share with you guys this morning. Um, before I do, can we pray? Can we do that? Yes? And why don't you grab the hand of the person next to you? I hope you sat strategically. <laughs> grab that hand, and we're going to bless. So, Father, we thank you this morning that we get to come. Lord, we thank you that it is our privilege as sons and daughters we get to come. And, Lord, that we come into your presence, Lord, with so much expectation. We know that when we come in, there's so many good things. Lord, overflowing from your mercy seat, we thank you, Lord. And that, Father, this is such a joy that as a family we enter in. We enter in. And so, Father, we pray, would you open up, Lord, even greater the portals of heaven in this room. God, would you open up our hearts and our eyes to seeing you, Jesus. And that, Lord, as we see you, we are transformed by you, God. So give us eyes to see and a heart that is soft and tender to you, Lord. So whatever you speak and whatever you do, that you would transform us more and more to looking like Jesus. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I was talking to Papa. 
last night, even into this morning, he woke me up at 5 a.m. He loves you all that much. He woke me up at 5. And 5 is the number of grace. And he was talking to me some more this morning. And I love it when he just kind of like supernaturally downloads the message. I'm just like, yay, Jesus. This is, this is so much better when he <laughs> has the word, you know, and it's so kind. And so as I was talking to him about this season and what we're in and what's on his heart, he kept talking to me about Thanksgiving. Can you say Thanksgiving? And that Thanksgiving, it's not a holiday. It's not one day. It's not even a season. That Thanksgiving... This is what the Lord said at 5 a.m. Thanksgiving is the plumb line of heaven. Do you know what I mean by that? What's a plumb line? Like, it's the central line. It's what operates everything. Does that make sense? It's the very thing that releases, like, water into a home. That's, it's like the central part of heaven. That's what I kept seeing. Like, in the spirit, he showed me this giant, this giant pipe. And if you want to, you know, have the joy of the Lord, you want to experience the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, what else? Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If you want to experience the fruit, which is the evidence of Holy Spirit in your life, it's all connected to thankfulness. Say thankfulness. It is the central part of heaven. It's how he operates, and it's how we are called to operate. Tell your neighbor, we're called to operate. So it's not this Hallmark Sunday turkey picture that the world tries to show us this is what Thanksgiving looks like. The Lord was showing me other pictures of Thanksgiving. So I went back. I went back into the Word, and I was like, Lord, reveal to me what Thanksgiving looks like. If you read the Bible, there are thousands of verses about giving thanks. Yeah? Thousands. I printed out about 100, and it took 13 pages back and forth. 13 pages of thanks. Just 100, or a little bit over 100. And I have it all here, just giving thanks. Psalms, um, throughout all of Psalms through into Ephesians, into the New Testament. And I saw something as I was studying thanks in the Bible. I saw something that actually in the revealing of God, the understanding of giving thanks was being transformed. Do you know what I mean? So who's my gospel project, folks? Wave your hand at me. Yes. So we all started studying through the Bible from Genesis, and we're going to continue on for the next six years. <laughs> it's a revelation. But right now, shh, we have traveled through, what, what chapter are we in right now, people? Yes, PC, what are we in? Very good, Leviticus and Numbers, thank you. We did both a little bit. So we're in Leviticus and Numbers, but we kind of traveled through, we went through, what's the beginning? First book of the Bible, Genesis, and then Exodus, and then he's playing on his app. Very good. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Leviticus, Numbers, and then Deuteronomy. So we've, we've traveled that far. And as we've been studying, especially as we got through Genesis and Exodus, we started seeming themes appear. A couple months ago, the Lord put on my heart to read through the Bible in one month. One month. You might be like, that's kind of intense. It's very intense. And so it actually ended up taking me three months. <laughs> but I tried. I was like, I'm going to do it in one month because I haven't read it in one month, I, in a long time. One, one year, the Lord put it on my heart and I actually read the Bible in seven days. That was right after I came to know Jesus. I said, I wanna know him fully. So by the grace and mercy of God, I read through the whole Bible in seven days. But it took me this time, just with busyness of life, it took me like three months to kind of go through it all. So I started in, in, in um, 
I started in, in May, and then I finished around like mid-July, maybe towards the end. Anyways, as I was going through the Bible, I started seeing this like kind of pattern appear with God's people. In the beginning, thanks look different, or giving thanks look different than what it is in the end. So in the beginning, when we saw the Israelites and his people, what was their cycle? Do you guys remember? Go ahead, PC. What is the cycle? Basically, um, they, they go somewhere and they face a problem. They complain against God. They think God can get help them. And then uh, God helps them. And then they are really happy. They promise to trust God. And then, and then repeat. And then repeat. Wow, give a hand. Good job, PC. It is, it is a cycle. It's so interesting. As they're wandering through the desert, as they have gotten through like captivity, as the Lord delivered them from Egypt and to, into like their promise, they would go through these cycles where they would face a problem and they would complain, they would grumble, they would, they would be offended even towards God. But out of God's mercy and his love, God would come miraculously, whether cloud of fire, cloud of smoke and fire and like literally meat raining from heaven. Who wants the Lord to rain meat from heaven? Anyone hungry this morning? Meat from heaven, like manna from heaven, like amazing, miraculous things. And they would give thanks for a moment. But a few chapters later, what are they doing? They're complaining again. And what it reveals to me is the posture of our heart unredeemed, right? That our heart is changeable based upon circumstance. And I give thanks dependent on whether or not I appreciate what I'm given. Does that make sense? So we see the cycle with the Israelites where thanks is something that they do. It's not who they are. It's not who they are. If God would come and give them a blessing, then they were happy. If they would face a problem where they feel like they're going to be defeated, they would grumble and complain like, God, you're not enough again. You know, it was this cycle. But as we see in the revelation of God, which is this beautiful unfolding mystery, if you study through the Bible, thanks, it changes. It changes. And where is the turning point? It's Jesus, yeah? Where Jesus demonstrated to us that thanks is not what you do, it is who you are. Tell your neighbor, it's who you are. It's out of the revelation of knowing whose you are. This Abba Father who cares even about the smallest things. And in that, we can give abundant praise. Yesterday, I had the privilege of witnessing a new beginning for a family. We had these two precious, it's a couple, who in the face of, of struggle and sickness and death, by the mercy of God, they chose to turn their hearts to the Lord. And I walked, got to witness them being baptized into the family, which is, this is the moment where you Yay! We have two new family members! It's amazing. And it's, it was such a beautiful thing. As I watched their hearts come alive to the knowledge of Jesus, as their house that was giving way to, like, to defeat and sadness was suddenly swung into the gates of heaven, like the sound of praise that was coming out of that house, I can't even describe. It was the most beautiful thing. And I just kind of sat there and I just was in awe as I'm watching this whole thing come about. I was, my heart was overflowing with thankfulness of just being a witness, being a witness to this is what he does. He redeems. He takes us who were meant for death us who are meant for destruction, us who are meant for utter darkness, and he redeems us to himself. 
That is why thanksgiving is not what you do, it's who you are. Do you understand what I'm saying? That as sons and daughters, when we come to know Jesus, it's no longer just, I give thanks because I'm obligated, right? Because someone did something nice, and so thanks, right? <laughs> Obligatory, thanks for helping out, right? No, but it overflows out of who you are. Tell your neighbor, it overflows out of who you are. And it's supernatural. Let me, take, let me show you a little picture of scripture so you get a kind of a glimpse of this. Let's take a look at Luke, the first passage. Can we read it together? So, and Jesus answering said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, say it, teacher. A certain money lender had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he canceled the debt of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon answered, the one I suppose whom he canceled the larger debt. And he said to him, you have judged rightly. Then turning towards the woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your home. You gave me no water for my feet, but he she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kisses, but from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But he who is forgiven little, loves little. When I think about what it looks like to operate, to be a person overflowing with things, I think of that woman. I think about that woman. Her response to being redeemed. It completely confounds the whole world, right? This woman whose sins were many, the world would say she should live in shame. But the love of God who redeemed her and she encountered the Lord when she met that love that covered the multitude of her sins, what was her response? It was a thanks that will be remembered for eternity, right? His word will never pass away, so forever we'll remember the moment she gave thanks, right? And it was this overflow of washing the feet of Jesus with her thanks and with her love. That's a person who has gotten the plumb line of heaven, right? Let's take a look at the next passage. Do y'all remember Zacchaeus? The little man. The little man in a tree. Can we read this together? And he was seeking to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd he could not because he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to him for he was about to pass away. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry, come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. Now Zacchaeus was a man who was judged by the world as being small and being little, and people hated him. Why? Why do people hate him? Thank you. What? Money collector. But more than that, what did he do? What did you say, Caleb? Say it loud. He cheated. He would double tax people. He wouldn't just tax people once. He would tax them twice. And so here is this little man, right, who is living kind of the opposite of things. He's taking by a lot. But when he encounters Jesus, he sees the man Jesus more than his eye seeing, his heart receiving Jesus. What happens? He receives Jesus joyfully in his home. And what does he do? Did I give you the next passage, buddy? Out of hearing who Jesus is, after knowing that he's been redeemed, even though his sins were many, how does he respond? Anybody want to say? PC, sorry. Yes, buddy. 
Go ahead, buddy. Uh huh. Joyfully. Uh huh. And then what did he do? He like brought him to his home. Uh huh. After that. And they had a talk. Uh huh. And Jesus said, "Your sins are forgiven." Uh huh. And. And then he's really thankful. Uh huh. And. How did he show his thankfulness? Uh. Michelle, go ahead. What did he do? Oh. Not double. Four full, thank you, Kayla, very good. Give a hand to my biblical scholars, very good. So his heart in seeing Jesus, it overflowed with thanks. Do you guys see it? And it's not this little, oh, thanks God. It is this overflow of extravagant thanks, amen? He poured it out and he was like, I'm not gonna give back to just what I stole. I'm gonna give four times as what I had stolen because I know where my value is now, amen? So tell your neighbor again, thanks is not what we do. It is who we are. It is who we are. And as you start to connect with this revelation, this new revelation we've been given, through the Holy Spirit, we recognize that thanks is more than just a, you know, five letter word. <laughs> it's more, it's so much more. I um, was spending time with the Lord and I was like, Lord, what does it look like? What is this extravagant life filled with thanks look like? Because right now, my life doesn't always look like that. Does your life look like that? Does your life look like an extravagant overflow of thanks? Be honest, who's complained in this room? Yes, who's, who's found something negative to say? Who's grumbled about something? Yes, okay. So we are all in this process of getting to this extravagant thanks, right? Honestly, I feel like it's too easy to find what's wrong. Right? If we look around in the world today, if we look around at our life circumstances, if we look around at the struggles we're facing, it's easy to say things are wrong, things are messed up, and things are broken. It takes a little bit more effort to see what is good. Is that true? Do you guys agree with that? Especially when you're facing hard things. How many of you guys have faced hard things? or are facing hard things. It's the hardest thing to give thanks. But here's the thing, you know, on this side of eternity, before we get to be with Jesus, this moment right here, tell your name, this moment right here. While things are not right, while things have not been made in alignment with heaven, this is the only time in your life, in this moment, you get to give extravagant thanks. Because when we face Jesus, everything's going to be amazing, right? We're going to see him face to face. He's going to catch every tear. There's not going to be sorrow or weeping. I'm probably just weeping out of like amazement. But not out of like sadness that things are wrong because he's literally going to make everything right. Right? When he comes. So it's this side of eternity where you get to say thanks. You get to give extravagant thanks while things are still not right. I remember this testimony that like kind of showed me this picture of like extravagant thanks to the Lord. And it was, um, I think it was uh, one of the IHOP leaders. They came and actually was doing a school. And she shared this testimony about her roommate. How many have some fun roommate experiences? So her roommate was kind of a very interesting character. I think she was a type four. <laughs> She's very, very kind of like dramatic. Everything is dramatic. Anyways, one day her roommate um, comes home and she, you know, uh, the leader from IHOP, she was in her room and she was just studying her Bible. 
She was kind of having her own quiet time. And all of a sudden, it was like a whirlwind comes through. Her roommate busts into their room, and she just, like, closes the door. Not, I don't think she realized that, she, that her roommate was sitting, like, in her chair behind her. She closes the door. She raises up her hands, and she was like, God, you will love me. Right now, I know you love me. I will praise you and know that you love me. And like she's saying it as loud as she can. And I'm going to give you all my thanks and all my love. And she's just yelling and screaming and very dramatic. So you can kind of imagine what that IHOP teacher was feeling. Like, who is this, who is this crazy lady? <laughs> you know, who am I living with? You know, because she's just like, she's just shouting as loud as she can. And then finally, when something, I guess, on the inside breaks, she stops. And then she just goes about her day. And then she sees her housemate. She's like, oh, hey. And then she walks off. <laughs> like, it was totally normal. Like, this is just normal. Later on, the teacher went to go talk to her roommate. It was like, so, you know, what was happening there? She got to hear the story. So her roommate had had probably one of the roughest days that she's had in a really long time. She had gone into a car accident in the morning. She had lost her wallet. She had just faced a lot of adversities, one after the other. So many things in which you could just give easily to complain, give easily to just like offense over and over again throughout her day. She, she, from almost the moment she woke up to the moment she got back into the room, it seemed like every moment just went terribly wrong. And she said, the Lord gave me this revelation that if I would just get into the place where I could just give him all of my praise, I can trust he'll make everything right. And maybe I'll get to see it, maybe I won't, but even if I don't, I'm going to give him all my love. That's what it looks like. Especially when things are going haywire and wrong. This year, the Lord gave me a new name. And I've shared with you before. Do you guys remember what my new name is? For this year. What is it, BC? Very good. Yes, buddy. My man. It is delight. So, like, or Hepzibah, right? Like, that was the name that the Lord gave me in the beginning of this year. As I asked him for this year, um, 50, 80, like, Lord, what is, what is the word for me that you want me to operate in? What is the word that's going to change and transform even my connection to who he is? And he said, delight, delight. In the beginning of September, or oh, actually, in the beginning of this new year, at the same time, I started going through this Transforming Grace class with Mama Nikki and Ju Ping. Now, I promise you when I first went into the class, I was just like, <laughs> I feel like this is like more homework, Lord. It felt like a burden, you know? I'm like, oh gosh, it's just gonna be another class. I know what grace is, like I've seen it before. Any of you guys have approached life like that before? Like, I've seen this before. It's going to be the same. And I love that the Lord's name is Jehovah Sneaky. Because when we don't expect it, he just surprises us. And for me, you know, I love Mama Nikki and I love Chu Ping. But they're both really different than me. We're just different people, and we operate very much in different ways. And the way that, like, Mama Nikki will approach a problem so different than the way that I would approach a problem, so different than the way that Ju Ping would approach a problem. But somehow, in his, in his manifold wisdom, he brought the three of us together to coming to discovering what grace is. And I love it, because as we've been going through it, it's been painful really painful because I was unaware of how much shame had been operating in my life so many ways I knew it in some respect in certain aspects of my life but in there were so many ways that I just realized shame 
had been how I saw everything and how living in it, it's like dying in it. You know what I mean? It's not really living. I'm just barely hanging on and surviving. But as we've been going through and they've been speaking life and challenging me, I feel like we cry every session. <laughs> like we just need four tissue boxes because as we're, we're giving our hearts to it, the Lord is showing us, man, we've been operating in it wrong, but this time there's no shame involved with recognizing I've been operating wrong, but I could just step in to his grace. Does that make sense? And a big part of the revelation that I've been giving is that name, the Lord's delight, which tells me I can give thanks. Does that make sense? I don't know if all of these are connecting for you, but in a big way, the Lord's showing me, I am no longer just Mishi. I am Papa's delight. And operating out of Papa's delight is what I was made for. And so that looks like an overflow of thanks and an overflow of praise. Can I get an amen? And maybe my name is Delight, but I believe your name is too. <laughs> my name is your name too. What is that song? His name is my name too. Jayon Jacob. Whatever. Anyway, tell your neighbor your name is Delight. Your name is Delight. So I have one more thing to show you. The Lord in the middle of me preparing, like talking about thanks being more than a season, being more than a day, but the plumb line of heaven in which his sons and daughters operate, I asked the Lord, give me another example. And he said, Catherine Coleman. Do you guys know who Catherine Coleman is? Oh, yeah. You do, PC? Who's Catherine Coleman? I feel like he ought to preach, you know? Yes. This female preacher uh -huh. who like grew up feeling like she needed like she grew up like I think her family was a little bit poor mm -hmm. and then basically God told her to um start business and she basically did the impossible by requesting like by requesting a really big stadium and stuff mm -hmm. and a really fancy piano for her piano player mm -hmm. and then God provided all the money and then she ended up being a really good missionary, I guess. Very good. Can we give a hand to PC? It's good. So yeah, Catherine Kuhlman grew up in the backwoods of Missouri, in the middle of nowhere, tiny town, no one would ever know. Younger sister, kind of overshadowed and overlooked. But for 30 years, from like 1940 to 1970, the way that the Lord used this woman of God, it's astounding, right? During a time where, like, it's unheard of, a woman preacher, unheard of. This woman, every time people would come to her, her services, like, 14,000 was small. It was like hundreds of thousands of people would come to her stadium-filled gatherings, and they would bring the sick. They would bring those incredibly infirmed, people in wheelchairs. And you know you went to a Catherine Kuhlman service by how many wheelchairs were left at the altar. It was so incredible. She was called the healing evangelist. And people by thousands were miraculously being healed. And she's this itty bitty tiny woman. And all the time she would say, I don't want you to look at me, I want you to look at Jesus. Just look at Jesus. And when she would pray, she said, I hope, Lord, they would not see Catherine Coleman. They would not see me. That they would see you, Jesus. And all they see in front of them is just this woman who wants more. Who's seen much but wants to give even more thanks. So can you imagine? It was, it was, it was amazing. Like for 30 years, it did not stop. Every gathering, people would come blind, deaf like multiple sclerosis, like diseases where it was incurable, unhealable, everything, and people would leave completely restored and made new. 
And I asked the Lord, how did this woman operate? So I have a tiny clip I'm going to show you. So Bryson's going to help me out. I stood there amazed in 1948 when the woman told me that she'd been healed of a tumor in Franklin, Pennsylvania. I was awed. All when this Mr. Orr came and said that he'd received sight in an eye. Because I'd never touched him, I'd never prayed for him. I too was curious as to what had happened. Recently, the St. Louis Globe Democrat reported that since 1948, and this is the figure that they gave, that at least two million people had been healed by the power of God through this ministry. At one time, I thought this was a, uh, this was a, uh, well, it was phony, but when it happened to me, I'd just tell the whole world that this is the, the, the truest thing that ever was. And I've seen healings here that make your hair stand on it. Hi, my name is Carol, and I had a healing last month. I had ankylosing spondylitis, which is arthritis of the small joints of the spine. And it had been verified by x-rays that uh, calcification had set in. And the doctors had confirmed it as being incurable and that it would get progressively worse. I had a healing, and my spine is straight, and I'm fine. And praise the Lord, I'm better than I have ever been, and I'll never be the same again. reason you know the ministry needs no defense <laughs> these miracles of healing need no defense sitting there there are thousands who are watching and they may, may feel as though that I am over dramatic when someone is wonderfully healed for the power of God what they don't understand is that I'm just as thrilled with the very last miracle that I saw God performed as the first time. There are no words in the human vocabulary to describe spiritual experiences and emotions because these things are spiritual, but as real as the air that you breathe. I thought they needed more air conditioning. I was getting so terribly hot, and then all at once, when I turned to look at burning, my head turned without holding it up. Now I can feel my hands and everything, and I noticed as soon as I stood up, I could feel my feet. And with multiple sclerosis, you don't have any feeling. I was a 245-pound vegetable, all humped over, stiff neck, left side paralyzed. As I walked in this auditorium, God performed a miracle. He straightened my body completely up. I had no ill feelings. My hands straightened up. I could turn my neck. My left side had use in it. I was a new man. I know from my own experience in my 30 years of surgery and working with patients of this kind that this is medically impossible, that this has to be a miracle of God to give me this healing of my back and to relieve this constant pain that I had in my leg. How do you feel now? I feel vibrant. vibrant? I feel like I could sh shock the world. By doing what? Praise the Lord. <laughs> I was blind and was led around like blind people. Have you seen a doctor about condition? Oh yes, for years. And what happened to you? I don't know. I started to cry. And um, I didn't ever cry much because I think that's one of the things about glaucoma. You don't have much fluid in the eyes or something. And then I thought I saw the face, but I didn't believe it. I thought it was in my mind's eye that I saw it. And I took my glasses off and rubbed my eyes. And I said to Quan, I see a little boy in a green sweater. I was stunned. I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't say anything. I, I, I kept wanting to cry, but I couldn't. It, it was just that I was just walking around dazed. I couldn't believe I was really seeing it. Even though I believe. So two million of the ones that they verified, two million people 
through those 30 years of healing ministry, people were being healed. Two million people. And that's verified, right? Where doctors verified. And you would see, you saw the line of people with wheelchairs that they would go in. And the Lord would miraculously heal people. And that was Catherine Coleman, the beautiful lady with the biggest smile. And if you caught her heart, and I hope you did this morning, how she saw and how she gave thanks. She said she gives, people think she's dramatic. And if you watch like her sermon, she's very like, very um, animated when she's preaching and sharing about the love of God. But she's one that's seen him and knows him. So she can't hold back. And the first person, she said the way that she gave praise and thanks for the first person she ever see, saw healed, she felt that for the last. She felt that for the last. Do you get it? This extravagant, beautiful, overflowing praise. I think this morning, if we could connect with that heart, this heart that knows that we don't just give thanks as an outward act, but it is, it is a new reality of who we are as redeemed sons and daughters of God, we would be like an astonishment to the world. Do you get it? The world would just be in awe and wonder. Because when everyone else should be mourning, we're laughing and filled with joy. So I loved what Stephen did this morning. He just went for it. And I'm praying that as we get to know and grow confidence in who we are, that we would be bold in doing the same. Amen? I wanted uh, one youth to just help me give thanks for a moment. And I asked Stephen, Stephen, can you come, buddy? Oh, Vincent, sorry. Vincent, why do I keep calling you Stephen? I am so sorry. Vincent, Vincent. <laughs> That was the cutest thing I've ever seen. I'm Vincent. Vincent, can we welcome Vincent? Vincent, do you forgive me? I keep calling you Stephen. I'm so sorry. I wanted him to just simple heart. How long have you been to Forerunner? Uh, three months. Only three months. During the, the Thanksgiving Council Appreciation, he actually wrote me probably one of the most beautiful letters I've ever gotten. I cried and I wept. I just want you to share with them because sometimes it takes someone who's just come to ignite a heart. We've been here for a while. It gets, we get used to seeing how great and how amazing God is, right? And it becomes dull. But this heart is so filled with so much joy. So I want you to share just like one minute, two minutes. What are you thankful for? and coming to Foreigner, or what are you thankful for in what God's doing in your life right now, okay? Um, okay. Um, I thank you um, for me, she, and everyone here is so nice to me, and yeah, and helping me like um, to uh, be a better person, and I thank you for God, like, um, let me come here and have a, and I can start my, start a new self and mm. yeah. And thank you God, L give me at least a uh, English, uh, at least I can speak English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. thank you. Amen. Can we give him a hand? <laughs> Go ahead, have a seat. I just wanted Vincent to be like a sign and a wonder for just a moment, just for us to see what overflowing with thanks is. Every time I see him, Vincent, every time I see him, he's just all like, he's always like, oh, Mishi, I am so thankful, blah, 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 blah. Or Mishi, this is so great, I'm so thankful, blah, 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 blah. Like really, he literally bounces like this, and he's brimming with thanks about something, about someone, about what God did in his life, and his new chapter that God's given. And so I'm praying that we all get a little bit of this. Yes? Amen. Could you all stand? Can we stand? Vincent, can you come back up one more time? I'm going to ask Vincent to impart his little joyful thanks, okay? Can you pray? Do you want Zongwen or Ingwen? 
English, his English is so good, right? Can we give him encouragement? His English is so good. Can you impart this bouncing thanks that we would even grow more in more thankfulness for the Lord, okay? Um, dear God, um, thank you for letting us like gather here and yes, worship you and, and, and hope let us um, be thankful to anything to God and and let us um, um don't be like the per the people in the desert yes Lord. yeah mm. and mm, in jesus name amen amen amen, <laughs> amen. <laughs> from the mouths of babes. Let us not be like the people in the desert. Let us give thanks. Before you guys leave today, would you bless and thank somebody before you leave this room? And have an amazing Thanksgiving week. We'll see you next week.